Hi, I am Linda Deer, and this guy right here. This guy right here is Ray Holly, <laughs> the chief executive of Random Bursts of Brilliance and Occasional Saber Toothed Wit. Saber Toothed Wit? Yep. What does that look like, Ray? That's sharp wit. <laughs> I see these diamond-shaped teeth, you know? Yeah. Huh, Ray? Is it something like that? Kind of like that. And like always, we are always so happy to be with you guys on Tuesdays. I hope you brought your questions for tonight. What a brilliant set for Valentine's Day. Isn't that, Look at that. fun? Matchsticks, you guys. You're like a matchmaker. What? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we were talking about that last week. Each week in Linda's Weekly Guided Insights, I ask my spirit guides, What's the most important thing for you guys to know right now? We channel these insights using Ask the Universal Channel the same way your spirit guides and angels communicate with you in a personal angel coaching session with me. Look for these links in the description of this video. Tonight, the spirit guides will be talking about the three primary loves of a lifetime. This was published today in Linda's Weekly Guided Insights. And like always, Ray will be monitoring the Facebook feed for your comments and questions. So feel free to let me know what's on your mind regarding tonight's insight. The three primary loves of a lifetime. Where are you on the journey through love relationships? The first love is an idealistic love. The second love is a hard love. And the third love is the love we didn't see coming. That would explain Ray and I the third time around. At least I didn't see it coming. I kind of snuck up on you. Ray did sneak up on me. Okay, and um, we can all choose to stay with our first love, the one that looks good and will make everybody else happy. Or we can choose to stay with the second love and believe that if we don't have to fight for it, then it's not worth having. Or we can choose the third love, the love that feels like home, the love that brings a quiet peace. So, Ray, who do we have with us so, so, so far, far tonight? Uh, people got in the door early. Linda Baca Goodwillie, Mary Elizabeth, Great. and Linda Schwartz. All right. All right. Okay. Um, okay. So we want to hear about your questions about these loves, about where you are in the journey through love relationships. Okay. Let's talk about the ones that you've experienced and where you are and what you're trying to maybe figure out or maybe you're in a relationship. And by the way, these don't have to be relationships. These three primary loves of a lifetime, they don't have to be marriages. In my case, they, they were marriages, all right? Mine too. Yeah, and Ray too. We, we both went all in. But I mean, I had three textbook just you just mentioned three textbook examples of first marriage, second marriage, third marriage, but I had I had a lot of loves, love relationships before that. This guy was the best boyfriend ever. I mean, he took you out. He spent money on you. I was, I was a musician. He bought you clothes. Musician. He did everything he could, even with the if, at times when money was a little tight. He found a way. All right. So Ray was was the best boyfriend. Um, and he, it's because he came in with his whole heart is how Ray entered into those relationships. He wasn't holding back. He wasn't thinking, well, if they, they may not love me as much, so I'm not going to love them as much. He was just in. All yeah, in. and all they, right. all, they all kind of did the same thing. They, they left me with my heart and took my money. Yeah. They did. That's right. <laughs> that's exactly I guess right. they didn't, maybe they didn't see a future with a musician. I don't know. But I've changed, huh? How did you change, right? Well, you know, um, I was a musician for a long time, 15 years. And uh, that's all I ever heard from my girlfriend's parents, you know, and relatives and everything. You know, when are you going to get a real job type of thing? And uh, I never really gave it much thought. 
right. uh, until I kind of figured out that, well, maybe I wasn't going to make a whole lot of money as a musician after. And you tried. Oh, man. Yeah, <laughs> he tried. He really tried. I mean, he went broke three times yeah, trying to I make sure it work. Did. Yeah. And that's nothing to be ashamed of. That's giving it everything you've got. But th third time around, I mean, it was three times, right, Ray? Right. The third time, Ray just said, whoa, yeah, I got to put this in perspective. This doesn't look like it's going to be my career. <laughs> That's going to make you know. That's going to make a living for me. So right. it took him a while to figure that out. But I, so I got a job where I could make money, but I also continued to play music. Right, right. And once you take away the the stress of having to make money playing music, doing something you love, and you get the money someplace else, get the pressure's off on the music side then you can enjoy the music then you can play whatever you want if you have time right okay did you have time oh yeah, yeah well there you time. go yeah yeah in fact, I, I probably i don't know i couldn't say i enjoyed playing music more after the money pressure was up but i could play different kind of music i could play the kind of music i love to play i didn't have to play what the public demanded. now it's interesting how ray went off on to his career part of this three loves Music was his first love. Right. Okay. So it doesn't have to be a person. It could be something that you do that you love. Okay. I could speak for that. I could definitely speak for that. I got into real estate in my early 20s and I, I went right through it and I loved it. Absolutely loved designing homes and building them. Was I the luckiest person on this planet or what? You know? I just felt so much gratitude for being able to do that. So that was that love interrupted, interfered with my first love, the one, the man I married first. It, I got so consumed in my work that it took what we had, and it was kind of fading out, and it put it into perspective. I guess that's the best way to say that what what it really happened there. All right. So that it could be a person, it could be something you do, and in my case, it was something I did, and and it was the person I married. Uh, you know, it, it's just interesting how things play into your life, and you discover yourself. You know, you guys, what it really comes down to is when you learn to love yourself after going through all of these experiences, learn to love yourself. Only then do you really have the capacity to love and be loved. You know, so that first love, we're kind of, you know, it's exciting. It's new. It, it's, you know, it's, it's a fantasy. fantasy. It is a fantasy. It totally is. And it's, it gets us to the next one, you know, and the next one. Okay. You guys, it's, this is supposed to be fun. Life is not supposed to be hard. We're supposed to enjoy this and don't judge yourself in your career. You know, you change careers, you know, so what? That's what you're supposed to do. You learned what you learned. Move on. Let your heart lead the way. Okay. Whether it's a person, whether it's a career, whether it's something that you just love to do. You're an artist. You know, artists can't help themselves. Artists, writers, singers, uh, composers. I mean, all the arts, you know, uh, they can't help themselves. It, it's, it's, it pulls on your soul. It has to, it has to express itself. So through all these loves, we learn who that is, this person, you. What do we have? Do we have any questions here? No, we have some more people join us. Okay. Lee, Talk about those loves, you guys. Mary Sorensen, Kathy's here. If you guys have any questions about these loves, these primary, these three primary loves of your life, this Chris, is yeah. Christine. This. Oh, we have a new person, Christine Marcuson <laughs> Leonard. Hi. Great. She says, hi, everyone. Great. Lori Sorensen. Well, they're coming in the door. Okay, we did have one important question. Oh, good. From Linda Schwartz says, where do you go to meet someone like Ray anymore? You know what? I'll tell you <laughs> what. We're going to have the guides to ask answer that question. Isn't that the truth, huh? That's a good question. <laughs> where have all the good guys gone? Okay, the guys that, that love you, they don't hold back. You know, they let it all out and they let it go and they love you with all their might and give you, give it all. They give the relationship everything they have. That would be Ray, all right? Okay, so where where are the Rays in the world? 
Linda, the the fact that you said, where do you go to meet someone like like Ray is an indication that you, like so many others, believe that you must chase something. You must go somewhere to find it when it really finds you. Okay, let me go back to this part of the, of the insight to bring light to what they're talking about. Okay, the third primary love. The third love is the love we didn't see coming. Okay, I didn't see this coming when it came into my life. But I did put out to the universe, and I did this, Linda. It was a couple of months before I, I was going with somebody, and I broke it off. And um, I just said to my guides, I said, okay, I'm done with this. I was 51 years old. Come on. Okay. I was done with this. And I said, I'm done picking my relationships. If I meet the right one, give me a sign. You guys read Guided. You know how it played out in chapter four. The guides came through the like a party line on the telephone. I was talking to a friend of mine. And over her voice came their words, guidance, their words. Lose your rules. He's the one. See, Ray was married. My number one rule was never to date married guys. But this time it was different. Lose your rules. He's the one. Ray was sent in by them to me. Okay. And so, and, and I actually wasn't going to even, I wasn't going to go there. Again, it has to do with, you don't know, and I'll keep reading this. This love found us. Okay, you hear this? The one that we could have missed had we not been open to what was actually good for us. <laughs> I would have kept picking the wrong people, you see. It may even initially seem to be wrong for us. That's what I kind of, that's where I was going with this, okay? It destroys any lingering ideals of the first love. So whatever was laid over from that first love long ago, the idealistic love is, is gone because this love doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to go to, to, to think of this love like the first one. This love comes so easy, it doesn't seem possible. Okay, I'm going to go back to something here, part three. The journal writing. When you meet somebody, you need to write down, Linda, all of you, you need to write down what happened when you met that person? What led up to meeting that person? See, it was a good couple years longer than that before I met Ray that it was showing itself to me. It was bleeding through my life. It was giving me little tidbits of, of um, clues that something was coming my way, but it was out in the distance still. When you write down what's going on, you can see, you can backtrack and see what was showing itself when you didn't realize that's what was going on, all right? It's important to write it down. This love comes so easy, you didn't, it didn't seem possible. It's the, it's the kind where the connection can't be explained because you didn't pick it. How about that? That's what's amazing about it. And this is the love that just fits. Yeah, the other question most people have is, when will I meet this person? Well, I don't know. Did I think that day when I went to the coffee shop that I was going to meet my next wife? Much less twice the same day? I mean, if you go to places, okay, you, you like to go to coffee shops, you like to go to concerts, you like to go to the gym, you know, you like to do things personally. Well, you're going to meet a lot of other people who like those things too, because they're there too. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be your next love and relationship. It's just that you're around people who have similar interests. Right. That's a good starting spot. It is. That's just, think of it this way. 
Okay, let me finish reading this, okay? Because this is going to wrap it up. It's going to make sense about where, where we actually wind up in our peace with this. There is no pressure to be anyone other than who you are when you're with, when you're with your third love. You accept each other and go from there. It feels foreign because it isn't like anything you have ever experienced before. This is the love that knows you better than you know yourself. It's kind of scary. It was for me, okay? Until this love, you never knew how easy it could be or what love really was. Like the stray that just shows up at your door, you didn't expect it, and before you knew it, you were in love. You found your best friend. It's the love that just feels right. Yeah, it, it's, you, it's... It's... There's no ego in this. There's no fighting it. There's no... Uh, there's no pretenses. There's no trying to show up in your best, you know, even though you know you're not always your best every day. You're, you're just more real about who you are. Right from the beginning. I mean, you're not playing those games from be, like we may have played from before, where we're trying to put our best shine on. It's not that we're being nasty or rude or anything. It's just that we're being who we are. We're being straightforward about who we are. And that's how you find that, that love, okay? That, that one that is the companionship love. Uh, okay, Linda Lin Schwartz has a good... Uh observation here. She didn't have all the rules that you had, okay, but been leading relatively isolated life these days. Okay, so if you're isolated, that, that's... That's real low odds. <laughs> that's, that's low odds, okay. And then she's pretty much given up honestly and not interested in doing, you know, the online dating thing. Well, you had kind of given up when we met. It didn't last long, though. Two months. That wasn't too long. I was I was single for two. But years. I was but I was single for six years. Right. Okay. Right. So I I really I wasn't thinking about it. No, I wasn't. I wasn't. And they told me, um, you know, in in two thousand one, uh, in my you know trip to Peru, my South America, they said love was not soon at that point, and I it, I wasn't affected by it because I wasn't looking for it. All right. Yeah, I think it's different if you're looking for it or not looking for it. Because if you're looking for it, you're liable to be tricked into the wrong thing. There's, yeah. There's a lot of pressure. That's the problem with it. The pressure. <coughs> right. Yeah. Especially if they're doing the online dating thing. So anyway, Linda, if you're isolating yourself, your odds are very low that you're going to meet anybody, let alone the right person. All right. right. So you, you've got to be comfortable within yourself about having even, even – having a relationship even being in a relationship i got i want you guys to think of this these three primary loves more like a friendship i want you to think about them like that if you find somebody who's really great to be with somebody you really like and they like you you guys really like to talk about your work at the end of the day you like to eat dinner together you like to wake up and call the other person in the morning and say good morning. Somebody just, it's just a friend. It's a, now that is going in the direction of that companionship, that best friend love. The third, best friends, by the way, best friends right here, best friends. I talk about them as best friends. So there's nothing, your best friend will not let you down. Okay. So think about it like that. From that, the door for love, if it's meant to be, your guidance will guide you right into it, both of you. Okay? So the third one is this unexpected love. And, right. and I was doing a little bit of research, and I, I, I found an interesting uh, definition or explanation of this love that just kind of shows up and catches you off guard right okay you ready for this big surprise you know two people meet and they understand each other's oddities and are surprised that they blend with each other yeah they actually like it <laughs> now i don't know what those oddities are okay but we have our oddities ray and i no question sure. about it and 
like if we wake up in the morning and one of us is, has it off up, you know, or I don't know, things are just don't bother me, don't talk to me, leave me alone. I I need I need some time out, you know. We really don't have a problem with that with each other. We let each other. I, I mean, I can sense it, or and and just you know, let let it go and let let him be alone and let him do, go about his business and let him do that and him with me. Same thing. You don't try to go in there and fix it. No, honey, I'm going to get you this. I'm going to do that. No, just leave me alone. <laughs> you know, sometimes that's what we need. So these relationships can be perfect if you know how to work with each other's oddities, like Ray was talking about. And because we have them, you guys. They're normal. And you love that other person enough to keep your eye on them because you don't want anything to happen to them. But you also don't push them. You leave them with that moment, that time, those hours, half the day, maybe the whole day. And um, they come to you when they're ready instead of you pushing the door open, trying to get them to, what's wrong with you? You know, none of that. So Why aren't you smiling? Yeah, it's just you don't push their buttons, you know? Yeah. Okay, so, so let's, let's go back and let's look at the first and second ones. We've talked a lot about the third one, you know. You didn't see it coming, but the first one, uh, read the first one again. I need some notes over here. Okay. Okay, so the first love is the one you thought would last forever. <laughs> Remember that? Oh That's my the story, God. The storybook one? It's the storybook one. The first love is the idealistic love, the unrealistic kind you dreamed about. We enter into it with the belief that this will be our only love, even though it doesn't feel quite right. Okay. So I think it doesn't feel quite right because there's a lot of expectations that put pressure on or stifle the relationship. From everybody. Okay. Right. Not just between the two people in it. Right. But from family. family. You know, they want those babies. We don't even have those babies. Yeah, those grand We don't have those babies. I mean, the pressure on that first love is ridiculous. Oh, oh, and what about your career? And you don't have any of the stuff on you in the third love. It just doesn't exist. Okay. So the first love is tends to be disappointing. Okay, not just to you, but everybody else that you disappointed. The whole family. You know, and it really wasn't your burden. But this is society's concept of what what you should be remember it's it's a layover from your early life from your childhood where they keep co trying to control you and hold the, rain, the reins on you and and get and make sure that you don't you don't make a mistake remember that there are no mistakes everything is like we learn we have lessons and and we come through it and we we are transformed you guys they're not mistakes but society has a lot of judgment and so it, it labels you as having made a mistake. Especially if you come from a religious family. Like I was first one, uh, my mother's side of the family, there was a lot of kids, a lot of relatives on my dad's side, not only two. But um, I was the first one in, on either side of the family that got a divorce. <gasps> Ray Holly. And they knew it. They said, we knew it. When, as soon as you said you were moving to California, nobody ever moved without outside a 50 mile radius of where they were born that you were go losing your way i was losing my way I, I moved three you know three thousand miles away and they said you know you're going to get lost out there in california you're going to you know lose your way you know, lose your way okay so see how that is that the early rains that are on you they're still on you all those expectations from some from siblings family members friends high school everything okay judgment Total judgment. Right. You, you guys, it may have been so long ago that you forgot about it, and that's a good thing. All right. The only time you might find it now is when you judge yourself. Okay. If you do that, if you go into that, go to part three in the journal writing and start writing about what you're judging about yourself, why you're isolating yourself, what, where you're blocking the possibilities. It's about not just the relationship, it, but it's about the possibilities of what that connection with that other person can bring into both of your lives. How cool is that? You're smart enough now. You guys know. 
let it just show you, you have to show up you have to let yourself go to these places where you enjoy yourself not some place where you're faking it you know if you go to a baseball game you don't like baseball it, or you go to a boat show just because you're trying to meet some guy some rich guys of, buy the boat you know they're all, believe me they always go on thursdays so to, to yacht to boat shows because the guys who are there on thursdays that means they can do whatever they want to do with their time why is that Ray? because most of them own their own business and they just take off and go buy a right. boat right but, the, but those guys aren't always the nicest people guys okay no, no not really you know so i mean it's about this is about a, a relationship that is your buddy your companion your best friend Okay, somebody, no matter what happens to either one of you, you guys are tight. You look out for each other. You're, you're, you're in it all the way, all right? Let's go back to that first one about the expectations that put pressure or stifle the relationship. It's not just the religious thing, but it's the family thing that, well, the family expects you to act a certain way. Well, here you go. I'm going to finish that uh, on the first love. At this early stage in life, we believe that this is what love should be. It's the type of love that others view us is uh, about how others view us is more important than how we actually feel. That's where Ray was going with this. It's a love that looks right. Okay. You remember how it's that, all about appearances, right? It's about how, you know, you, you guys look, they go, you're per you look, you look, you appear to be perfect for each other. Right. And it boxes you in a corner. Now you've got to shine every time. You've got to be really sharp when you go out. You you know you both have to look like that image they had that they that they expressed that you look like that they that they adore. Okay. Yeah, the, it, uh, it's like family tradition. You know, on Sundays we do this, and on holidays we do this, and That's every pressure. year we do the same thing. And you you better show up. And you better do the right things, say the right things, bring the right things. I mean, you know, you, you don't live like that now, do you? Well, I, I don't live like that, you guys. But then when I think about it, I had some of that pressure on me from the beginning, from that first one, but not a lot. Because I got pulled into my career in a really strong way. And I got, I, I was just consumed with it. I fell in love with what I was doing. So the disappointments in the relationship, and believe me, there were many, I kind of could shine them on. Because as long as the relationship stayed intact, it didn't interrupt my flow, my, my career, what I was able to do, okay? So I didn't let that, and he loved me because I was making really good money. <laughs> there you go. And I knew it, you guys. I was not stupid and naive about that. But um, it was it was devastating when the relationship was over. Nevertheless, all right. But see, you got drawn in, like you say, to your career, at 19 years old. I know. And, and you were divorced what, when you were 26. 26. Okay, I didn't get married till I was 26. Late bloomer, you know. What can late, I tell you? Late bloomer, you know. I was still rocking and rolling, you know. <laughs> um. So you're not the typical case for the first type of relationship because that you know I, I gotta say this my relationship was was with my guys right that was your first love that, that this was where i had such a strong connection throughout my life that really nothing has superseded this okay where i have this connection i knew what to do when to do it i acted on it my partner many times i've, I've been very raised my third husband they would they would cringe at you're gonna do that you know, here I am married to them, right? And and I've got this, I don't think about it. I'm just, I know when the guidance comes through, it's time to go into action, right? And my, my mate would be digging their heels in going, oh my God, we couldn't possibly do that. Well, I wouldn't even think twice and I was already doing it. And they were just hanging on, like hanging on to me, trying to keep up, you know? It's just, it's a different world. And um, in both of those relationships, they they both i guess i the, to be honest they both lost their way and they couldn't keep up with me i mean i was i, I have an energy level that's just crazy it doesn't make any sense and it's because of this connection that i have so once you guys have this you've got this connection you've got to meet somebody who aligns with that spiritual part of you critical okay 
here's some interesting demographics of our group tonight. Great. Okay, here great. we go. Uh, Linda Schwartz wonders why nobody else is writing anything except her. Yeah, okay. That's but right. Mary Elizabeth says, uh, is everyone supposed to find the one while they're here? The astrologer that told me to connect with my spirit guides. Uh, then after she learned that, she went to Arizona, found your book at Joyce's Airbnb, right? Right. And she told me, the astrologer, that she also wouldn't find anyone who will love her the way she wants to be loved until she's in her 50s. So you were in your 50s. That's true. I yeah. was in my 50s. Yeah. Uh, they, these marriages I was in, uh, Mary, before Ray, they were they were lessons, all right? Yeah. They were lessons. This experience I have with Ray is a relationship is an experience. I don't regret my lessons. If it had it not been for those lessons I'd been through, I wouldn't have I wouldn't be realistic about being in a relationship now, okay? About really what it's like to be in it for the long run, all right? So it doesn't mean you won't have relationships. You have relationships with everything, your job, your your friends, your pets, your every yeah, your pets, everything. You have a relationship with your clothes, your car, your it, it, you have a relationship with everything. So you're learning, even though you may not have that that significant other in your life right now, and you will have friends and maybe loves and you know whatever they are that teach you and, and you learn from along the way so that you have the experience so at in your 50s you can actually achieve that one and only you learn about you learn a lot about relationships but by watching your friends oh yeah the perfect couple for six years seven years and all of a sudden they're getting a divorce right right how could that happen and in, it shouldn't be such a thing okay it should be oh well, you know, they, they learned what they learned and they were true to themselves in the sense that they didn't hold each other into a, in a situation that wasn't, that, that didn't meet the standards, the, that didn't satisfy either one of you, all right? Nothing to take personally. It's just let each other go and move on. It was good. You learned a lot from that relationship. Move on. And stop taking all this personally. It's not meant to be taken personally, you guys. You're supposed to learn from it, but you're not supposed to let it destroy you. Taking it personally will will drag you down. That's why writing in your journal in part three, writing in your journal about what's going on for 15 minutes a day will keep you from, from getting going going through your life and just going through it instead of growing through it where you can see what's going on okay you're going to be a better shot at your life you're going to get a better shot at it if you can see what's going on because you can't see it when you're in it you can't that's exactly right so on the other hand Lori says she's 46 and she's never been married and Mary Elizabeth says she doesn't really mind, to be honest, you know, yeah. if it takes till she's 50. Right. Okay. And Christine says um, she had a very best friend in the world. We dated for nine months, and I knew he was my soulmate. We broke up, but we stayed best friends for many years. Life happened, and we went almost 10 years without seeing each other again. Found each other again two years ago, and then it, and then it just abruptly ended again. Tried to keep the door open, but not sure anymore. Well, you know. It happened the same way. They, they they got together, they broke up. They got together, they broke up. It wasn't meant to be a continuous thing. Right. That's right. And soulmates many times are not, they're all full on, all on. You learn, you're really tight, you learn, and then all of a sudden things change and off you go. Right. They're you not know, marriage partners a lot of times. They're not. No. No. You can have a best friend that you learn more from anybody you ever married. Yeah. Here's, here's how I look at these things. If you're going to be with somebody who's really right for you, you guys will wind up doing a lot of things together that make a difference. Maybe you guys will wind up uh, raising dogs 
that are, are that assist other people that that are helpful to other people that that you train that you both love these animals and you both are in this business together where you together you know train these dogs with so much love and care maybe that's what you guys do together maybe what you do together is you start a landscaping business and and you do these great designs okay where together you 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 get together and you both have really good ideas and and build an awesome business from that it's something you do together that makes it bigger than you could have done it on your own. And you're usually doing it for someone else, not for yourself. No, that's right. You're doing it like what Ray and I do with this project. We do it together. I have my part that I do, and he has his part that he does. And he also makes a living, okay, so that we can afford to do this business in his recruiting business. So we both pitch in. But this is our love, this project, right. and helping you guys understand that that you guys always have help, that you that you're never alone, and you're always being guided. And as long as you don't miss it, don't miss the guidance. You will never be confused about where you're going. You might get bumped around a little bit in your life and going, "Oh my gosh, I didn't see that coming. I didn't expect that." Write it in your journal. That's right. You you didn't expect it because. You guys, when you're in it, you can't see it when you're in it. And the guides know that. They know the fact that you're physic in a physical body, that you're preoccupied with all the demands just of the body, okay? Shelter, food, you know, money. You, you've got to make a living just to survive this, all right? So they know that there's a lot on the plate for you guys while you're here to learn what you came here to learn. They know that. So you're really, your your loves, your real loves, the best friends you'll ever have that would never disappoint you and never judge you ever are your guides, okay? What you learn from them and the direction they give you as long as you, you stay tuned in, all right? And remember, when you forget it, you write it down so you don't forget what came through because it won't maybe be appropriate for you to apply it in the moment it came through, but tomorrow it might be. Or next week it might be. It's right there. Okay. Uh, Mary Elizabeth says, I understand because I've been married before and that was surely a lesson for her. <laughs> um, and Lori says, she was told by a palm reader in her early 20s that she would marry a very wealthy man and that's been in her subconscious since then. She wonders if that's something that blocked her or maybe it's all divine timing. Well, it's always divine timing. Everything happens when it's supposed to happen and not sooner. Yeah, but, but don't hang on to that. Yeah, Let, don't hang on. Yeah, don't hang on to that. In fact, that's always, I think, where somebody predicts something for you. Right. It limits you. It limits you. Mm -hmm. Now, if that same palm reader said, you will live the rest of your life with limitless possibilities, that's different. You know. I could feel our relationship, Ray, Four days before it showed up, I felt a huge rush come through me. I went, I physically felt the feeling of it through my body. I'm going like an energy surge. I said to myself, mm, uh oh, this whole thing's coming, coming. There's something coming and I can feel it. And it, within a couple of days, four days or so uh, is when we first met and met twice in the first day. And I tried to push it away. Okay. And then when it came, I mean, at one point, it was just, um, it was meant to be. And it, is everything perfect? No, it is not perfect. There's times when things are, with Ray and I, they are not perfect. That's because we're both Leos, we're both right. It, it, it's not that. It, it's just that don't expect, don't burden the relationship with expectations that are unrealistic. Right, right. Okay, so we talked a lot about that first the first love that the expectations put pressure on that relationship and stifle the eventually stifle the relationship. Right. And one person just and at that goes point, off and has an affair. That's some totally out of character. And at that point, what can ha what happens in that first relationship could be very, very damaging to you if you were taking it 
personally. personally. It, oh. it, it could just choke you up, stop you out, and make you very conservative about ever letting anybody back in again. Right. And isolate yourself, okay? Because you got hurt, okay? Somebody, in fact, really what happened, that person that supposedly hurt you, that person didn't know how to love, okay? It wasn't that person. It was that person that hurt you. It wasn't love that hurt you. There's a difference. Right. And you, you allowed it to hurt you because you didn't see it coming. Your expectations were so high. Um, your, your, um, you know, th there was just too many conditions on it. And it, it stifles the relationship. You know, when somebody says, oh, here's my second husband. He says, to, we're out to dinner with some people. And he goes, yeah, he goes, Linda and I get along really well. We never fight. I was so disgusted with him. He never communicated. He would just shut down. Okay. He wouldn't talk about this. He wouldn't talk about that. Couldn't talk about this or that. It was like walking on eggshells. He said that in front of everybody, trying to back me into a corner, trying to box me in. And I busted him. I said, right in front of everybody. I said, yeah, we don't fight because we don't talk. Okay. We don't have a relationship. This is fake. Oh my God. By the way, that was the end of it. It was just a couple more years later before it was completely over divorce, yeah. you know, property settlement agreement, you know, all the ugly stuff. Um, and uh, that was the end of it. I, but I couldn't, I could not, I could not let him box me into a corner. Oh, we, we get along great because we never fight. Right. When did you decide that? Is this a new rule here? You know, are you making this stuff up? Yes, you are. And I'm going to bust you for it. So anyway, that's my that's the way I took care of it. <laughs> okay, so what we're um, we talked about that first one that where you put pressure on each other and it stifles a relationship until you can get away from the people who are putting that pressure on you, like a family. Yeah, and you move across the old, old friends. You move across the country and start over. Well, yeah, and well, no. Finally, you're away from the people who put pressure on you right. to do the things that they expect and uh, you just go off and do what you always wanted to do, like have an affair. You know. Well, that was your ex, right? That was one of them, yeah. But we, what we haven't talked about much was, is the second one. Right, that's right. We talked about the first one, right. we talked about the third one that right. just kind of shows up. Now here comes the second one. There's a lot of, uh, you know, that's, dirty laundry here in the middle. The second one was very important. And how was it important for you, Ray? Well, what the did second you learn? one, the second one, going into a second marriage, it's conditional. Definitely, it's conditional. Yes, it is. What even if guy, you, what did the guy even say? if you think it's not, okay, because part of you just coming out of that first one still wants that idealistic love, okay. Yeah. So we we start making it up, right? All right. The second one. This is brutally honest, you guys. We get down on this thing here. We don't. I, I never tell you guys things that isn't straight up, okay? We just get real with this. Okay, so the second relationship is the money partnership. The second love is the hard one. It's the one that teaches us lessons about who we are and how we need to be loved. In that relationship, you finally realize how you need to be loved. You might be a little late. You may have picked the wrong person, probably did, second relationship. Third one is where you can live that out. But the second one is, un, is, a, is a conditional love. So you both are conditional in this thing. It's about what the other person can do for you. This kind of love hurts, either through deceit or manipulation. Mm. Okay. Um, this is the love where we take everything to the limit. Many times it's unhealthy, unbalanced with money, is at the core of this. There may be emotional, mental, and physical abuse along with high levels of drama. You know, that's going to be, I'm going to say this second love is going to be 30s and 40s, right in there. This is what keeps us addicted to this storyline. It's the emotional roller coaster of extreme highs and lows. 
and like a junkie trying to get a fix, we stick it out through the lows, expecting the highs will make it worthwhile. At the conclusion of this love, you will ask yourself, was I sleeping with the enemy? They have movies about this stuff, you guys. Mm. The 30s and 40s would be that second love. This is the kind of love when trying to make it work overrides the obvious truth. It either works or it doesn't. This is the setup for the third love, but you don't know it yet. This is the love we wish was right. It's the, usually the one we had our kids with. So we would like, you know, we, it's the one we made most of our money in. And, you know, to start over again, to, to get a, split everything and start over again is like, oh, my God, not again. You know, it feels like that at that moment. What do we have, Ray? Um, let's, let's comment on that. I mean, that is, I think of all three relationships, that second one, the one in the middle is, is the most dangerous. It is the most dangerous, definitely. It can, it can be. It's what a lot of dramas are made out of, you know, murder, mysteries, and, you know, and deceit, and lying, and all this kind of stuff that goes on. It, it's, it gets into the, into the, you know, the heavy stuff, you know? And the people who are in their 40s, you know, 40s to 50s, that's where the, the midlife crisis comes in, and, right. and the husband runs off and, and, and marries his secretary, who's 20 or 21, you know, um, <laughs> he's still chasing. What they're trying to do is they're trying to relive their first one. Well, and again, to try to do it right, you know, try to fix the mistakes they made. It's immature. It, it is immature. It really is immature. If you're, if you're going back, you can never go back, you guys. Once we learn what we learn, there is no going back. It's all about going forward, okay? And learning with what you've learned to figure this stuff out. But honestly, the connection to your guides, they will let you know. They will, it, as long as we can smooth it out, get the drama out of the way, the drama, the trauma, all this stuff that goes on in those 30s and 40s. Once we're done with that, and we start to breathe, and we start to listen, and we start to track our steps, okay? We start doing this 15 minute thing a day where we have that meeting with our guides. And we write down what was unusual and out of the ordinary that day and track our steps, you guys. We're just gonna keep living an unconscious life. And that's, that's it's oblivion is what it is when we choose that. And not choosing anything is oblivion. Okay, so not making a choice is another is is indeed a choice. All right. And the fact that you can't see it, you always say you can't see it when you're in it. That's the importance of this book here. And this the question uh, Christine has, and, she, and she's new with us. Yeah. Um, she knows that her guides are always there all the time because there's coincidences and messages and things that come through guidance. Right. Come through all kinds all of all the time. All the time. How, does, how do I invite them in further to talk to them more often? You write. You write it right. down. Okay, in part three, what you're going to do, Christine, right? Interesting. You're going to start writing to your guides. Right. You're going to start having dialogue, conversation with your guides. You're gonna, it's going to be somebody you report to at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day or just before you go to sleep. This is your quiet time with your real friends, with the friends who will never let you down, ever, 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 un never conditional, all right? So you can tell them anything. This is how you're going to find out who this is. I'm talking about you, who you are. This is how you're going to bump into it. Plus, you wrote, you wrote two little books after, I don't know if Christine's read Guided or not, but there's 137 lessons in guided that trigger these reminders of who you are and how you apply these in your life. And then you wrote another book called uh, Meeting the Real You. Right, I've got five books. So when you go to Amazon and you look up my name, Linda Deer, D as in David, E-I-R on Amazon, you'll find all my books. This is my flagship book. This has 
you know, it, it won an award, what, within a couple of years after it was right. published. And it's been, it's been screaming off the charts. It's, it's been a bestseller since it's come out in at least three or four categories. Right. So this book is, is just held the test of time, you know? Um, the other books are, are interconnected books to Guided. This is the companion journal to Guided. It came about from the fans asking me how they could make the connection to their spirit guides. That's how this book came about, how, how this journal came about. We're going to be having webinars that we do every month for part two of this journal. I haven't gotten to that point yet. I've, I've been, uh, I've been, been busy. busy, very busy with uh, some, so many things. And um, I'm doing an interview in the Irish Post. <laughs> well, you're Irish. I am. They yeah. picked a good subject. Yeah. So anyway, we have a lot of things going on, but we're going to, we're going to announce it when it, it becomes live and teach you guys how to, how to take the journey like I did and how to step into this guidance in a solid way and heal that past that causes you to repeat things that you would you could do better had you not done that. A lot of it has to do with relationships because it does. In, in this book, in my guided journey, you, you just did a post recently about you can't open new doors with old keys. Right. And that got a lot of lot of action on Facebook. But what that meant was the old keys are the things you were taught growing up that were plain out wrong. Right. They don't serve you. Right. But those people who taught you the things that were wrong, society, teachers, parents, you name it, taught you things that were wrong. And you took those as gospel because they're authority figures. And you took those things that they taught you that were wrong and they turned into your belief systems that you made decisions with the rest of your life, in your 20s and your 30s and your 40s. And by the time you get to that 40s, that's about the time people start thinking, well, you know, Here's all the things I learned in my first 20 years of life, and I applied them in the second 20 years of life, but things don't seem to be working out. I did all the right things that I was told to do, taught to do, but why, why do I feel the way I do? What's missing? They, they, they always say, there's something missing, and I don't know what it is. And you won't. You won't know what it is until, until you start tracking your steps and logging what's going on in your life on a day-to-day -day basis for only 15 minutes a day. You guys think about this as an investment in you. You've got investments in your, you know, maybe in your real estate, investments in your career, invest, investments in your kids, investments in you know, all this investment, this time, this care, this love, this attention that you pay to all these things in yourself. You, you exercise as an investment in your health. You, you've got all these investments going on. This is an investment in the reason you came here. This is an investment in achieving what you came here to do that you forgot because you were assigned your amnesia. But you know who wasn't assigned your amnesia? Your guides. They remember everything. They know why you're here. And that's why they send you guidance. They never shout at you. They send it to you in real subtle ways. So you've got to write it down so you stop missing it. Right, especially how do you invite them in further to talk to them? You especially write down the things that you think are odd or out of the ordinary right. that happened in your life. Right, that day. Right. And, and you may say, sit down sometimes and go, I, ha I don't know what to write. Yes, you do. If you don't remember anything that was out of the ordinary or unusual that day, write to your guides. Remember, these guides never judge you. They love you unconditionally, and they're always there. Imagine having somebody who listens to you and hears every single, not just word, but feeling that goes into it. They, they feel the same thing you do when they, when they see you right with that energy that you use. Okay, This is a relationship you have. And if you can build this relationship, with your spirit guides, with your guides, with those, with those who followed you here, you can start to uncover and unearth this relationship and nurture it. Nurture yourself, your real self back into existence. 
That's what you do when you write in here. That's what it brings out. Imagine you being fully here, you being totally present, you being fearless. I'm not talking about naive. No, I'm talking fearless because you're strong. You know who you are. When you know who you are, you can trust the intuition and act on the guidance. Before, because guidance has a shelf life. You don't act on it, you know, you, you, it's going to pass you by. You're going to miss that opportunity. So this is about working on relationships. This is the pre, pri, three primary loves of your lifetime. Relationships. So start with this. Start doing this. You're going to be surprised at this relationship that you're building with those who followed you here. Okay? From this, once you have that connection and that bridge, that communication bridge with your guides, they'll let you know who is right for you. You will feel it. You will know it. You mm -hmm. won't, you, it'll be so obvious when it shows up. It won't be anything like before when you were doing all the picking. It's different. Yeah, and the whole goal of this book, My Guided Journey, is to write those things down so you can go back through your life, right back to the time you came here, through your early life, and pinpoint where you were taught the wrong thing. That's part two. That's part two. That's the part where we're going to be doing these webinars to walk you guys back through those years of your life, those early years where you got frozen in time, you got stuck, okay? You don't even know it. The parts of you right now that feel um, stuck or uncomfortable or just out of sorts, like you don't fit in or something's not right, that's the part I'm talking about. That's the part of part two, chapter one through 18, where I take you back into your early life and examine those things and find out what that was that stopped you out that's right in your face right now, stopping you out now. Okay. Okay, I'm going to, we're going to close this session with the Spirit Guide's closing message about the three primary loves of a lifetime. But before that, I've got one announcement. Next Tuesday, February 18th, right here on my Facebook page, Linda Dear Author, this will, this will be another Q&A and commentary with me and my spirit guides at 6 p.m. Pacific time, so don't miss it. In Linda's Weekly Guided Insights, my spirit guides will be talking about how different would your life be if you knew what was really going on. This really flushes that out, okay? This, this process this guided journal writing system, all right? It starts with reading guided or listening to guided first and then getting my guided journey and taking this journey, all right? And I help you with that every week, you guys. So here's what this one's about. The first question that must come into your mind is, is there really something else going on? You won't know it until you start writing in part three. Only then will you see what it is, but not the moment you write it down. You'll see it a day later with, upon reviewing what you wrote, a week later, a month later, but you won't see it the moment you write it down. From the time you got here, you were only exposed to one thing, and that is what was really going on. As a new person, you had no concept of what if, only why? Because of the amnesia you were assigned upon arriving here, you were at the mercy of learning from the people who were already here and what they had learned, which is what they learned from their parents. You didn't even know why you were being taught what you were, what you were or had any basis to compare it to. Even when the things you were being taught didn't quite feel quite right, you eventually accepted them. 
that was a mistake. So when did you have the opportunity to observe what was really going on while all this pressure from everyone around you, your teachers, your parents, the peers in, in, your, in your life, okay, society, telling you how to think, what to do, who to love, who not to love. They had all these opinions about the way you should um, conduct your life, what schools you should go to, what grade averages you must get, the pressure of, of this world, all right? So you were so overwhelmed with that, you forgot who you were. So you were all in here. All you had was this world. And when that's where you found yourself, then you were really scared. While everyone else here just seemed to think that this was normal to feel to feel so disconnected from something that even you forgot about yourself, your true self. Okay, so that's what we're going to be talking about next week. So join us on that. And before we close the session, if my work has changed your life in any way, my books. My coaching, Tuesdays, you know, uh, any of this has changed your life in any way. Share the video. Tell your friends about what I do, all right, about my work. And tell them to come and join us on Tuesdays. And leave a review. And leave a review for these books, please. Oh, that is so important. I've noticed that there's been reviews coming in. Some of you have been doing that. Thank you so much. I forgot to ask. So I'm asking now, don't forget to ask. When you guys need something, want something, ask, okay? And asking starts right here in part three. If you don't know what to write, ask. Ask it. And when you start asking, start asking with why questions because why questions have no agenda. They are clean. So the likelihood of you getting a response that you recognize the response to your asking why is more obvious when you receive it. Okay. All right. So the guides are going to close this session with their closing message about the three primary loves of a lifetime. And here they go. Everyone comes in with infinite possibilities in their life. This is true with all three stages of relationships also. But people stifle and confine themselves by expecting things. It's no wonder people feel unfulfilled and disappointed by the time they're in their 40s or 50s when they don't get what they expected but rather got what they needed. Start asking us, what do I need and why do I need it? Those are important to write down what they just said right there. Stop asking when, how soon, how much, and why not? These types of questions only build expectation. You will never be surprised by having expectations. You will never be surprised by having expectations because they're expectations. There's no room for surprise. 
Right. The cup is already filled with the expectations. There's no room in it. There's no there's no there's no area in it for in it for something new to come in, something you didn't expect. Yeah. So you guys just need to all you need to do is track your steps. It's happening all the time. In fact, when you start writing in part three, you're going to see that it's happening way more and faster than you thought before you started to document what was going on in your life for just 15 minutes a day. You guys, I want you to think about this. This is part three. You take part, you take this book, you take your pen, you go to bed, you have your little nut light on. You turn off the TV or whatever. And you breathe. You let yourself breathe in your life force. Because we, we don't breathe right. We breathe really shallow, okay? So you breathe. Then you sit back. And you take that moment. And then you just let it come through. You write down about how you felt that day. What was unusual or out of the ordinary, or you just to have a conversation with, with those who followed you here. Imagine that they're lit watching every word that you lay down on the pages. They are watching you. And the more they see you do your part, the more they see you do your part, the more they're going to do their part. You want to know why? Because when you do this, you are present. And when you are present, they can finally reach you. Okay? That's how it works. So, Ray, do we have anybody else asking anything before well, we close? Well, Christine, who's new with us, she says she will be here next Tuesday. Great, Christine. We love it. And we, we have fun on Tuesdays. Yeah, and if you're not hitting Linda's weekly guided insights ray posted it in the description of the video you'll see linda's weekly guided insights make sure you sign up for it if you guys if any of you are not signed up for it it's free and you'll get the insight the morning of tuesdays every tuesday, tuesday morning tuesday morning and then you'll you'll at night you know at 6 p.m pacific time you're, you'll meet with ray and i right here on the, on facebook right here live on Facebook, where we work with you guys. If you have questions and you need to speak with your guys, you know, we'll do that. We'll, you, got, you can talk with your guys. We'll help you understand what's going on with you and guide you through it. All right. Yeah. The, it gives you, you, once you, once you get in the morning, when you wake up, it gives you all day to get your comments and questions together for what we talk about that right. night. And, and what I really love is when you guys go to read the insight, it, I take you, it takes you to the website where you can read the whole thing. If you would leave a comment at the bottom of the insight, I respond to you. I look for those throughout the day and I respond to you. And then we bring those into the session and Ray reads them in our session. Those are so good. Right. So feel free to do that. That's so nice to do. And everybody learns from each other doing that. So leave a comment. Yeah. About okay. the insight. All right. All right. So we will see you guys next Tuesday. Have a great Valentine's Day. Yes, I'm Your Friday. grandfather's name was Valentine. It was. It was. See? Yeah, it was. You're really Irish. I know. It's crazy. Anyhow. Anyway, so you guys have a great Valentine's Day on Friday. Friday, isn't it? Yeah, on Friday. Isn't that the busiest restaurant day of the, of the year? Is it? More so than Mother's Day. Is that right, Ray? Everybody has a Valentine practically, but not everybody has a mother. <laughs> Still, yeah, know. that's true. That's well, right. no, not everybody has a Valentine, Ray. Well, not everybody. But... Some some people opt out of the Valentine thing because they don't have the right person in their life. But you guys just go out and do the things that you love to do. Go to the places you love to go, and you know what? You're going to meet. Expect to meet friends. Right. And if it turns out that one of them are really, really, you know, somebody that you can spend more time with, like your Valentine, then it's meant to be. It, it's out of your hands. It guided you there. It, it's not a. It's not a coincidence. It. It didn't show up for no reason. But keep track as you enter into that new love. Track it. Track your steps 
and write in part three of your journal 15 minutes a day, preferably just before you go to bed at night in your quiet time when you're just by yourself, okay? And you have that peace and quiet with your guides, okay? And just write in there what your heart wants to write about. And you can't miss. You're going to know what's right for you. You're going to know what to do and when to do it. Okay. All right, everybody. We'll see you guys next Tuesday. Get some sleep. Hannah, you can go back to sleep now. It's 4 o'clock in the morning there. <laughs> Hate to keep you up any longer. Good night. Good night, everybody. <laughs>